Hey guys, I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for part three of summer tubbing, which is doubling as a Tuesday tip. Last week I talked about how I plant my baskets and arrange my tubs, and this week I want to talk about the filtration that I choose. A lot of times with tubs, people don't use any filtration at all, and that's totally fine. However, with the very small species that I focus on, some of the insect larvae can actually be a danger to the fish instead of vice versa. So I prefer to use some air-driven filtration in my tubs. Um, I'll show you in a moment, but I've just gathered together some old sponge filters, some airline tubing, and various other parts and bits and baubles in order to cobble together an air system for my bin setup. In previous years, when I only had two or three bins going, I would just use individual pumps. That is also fine. But this year I sort of decided to mimic a closed loop system like I use in my fish room. So I have a single 35 watt pump and then I've run rigid tubing to each of the bins, which I've buried. And then I've added um, some valves that we had laying around and ran just normal aquarium airline to sponge filters. So let's take a look. Nipples to hook the airline to run the filters from the PVC. In the fish room, I used little adjustable valves, but because I'm using a small pump, I'm going to just run them full bore. Ooh, that made a fancy noise. So I've amassed a bunch of materials today, some from the fish room and some I raided from my husband's shop in order to run air to the tubs. And I like to run air to the tubs because it helps prevent mosquitoes as well as it increases the oxygenation of the tubs when things get really warm and keeps the temperature more consistent because of that as well. And so I have this little 35 watt pump that I generally use at shows, grabbed a couple of tools. I have a bunch of these ATI Pro sponge filters. I used to use these in the fish room before I upgraded to Perret foam and just kept them, so I'm gonna use those. And then I found this 3 8 OD tubing in my husband's shop, which I think is generally used for air brakes, but we're gonna see if it works for this because it's very rigid and I can bury it in the stone so it'll be a less obvious solution. Some tape, I had to actually purchase these brass hose barbs, um, which are an adapter from the valves I found in his shop to the airline. And then we have these slip to go connect fittings uh, that we'll use to run the black line. So I'm going to run zip ties again to hold the valves uh, so that the barb end is facing in for me to put the airline to my filters. And then the slip fittings are going back so that I can hook the tube to. Keeping up the theme of using what we have, we're using Teflon tape that's a little too big just for a tighter fit. It's probably not necessary, but because I'm not using a particularly large pump, I want to minimize as much air leaking as possible. And tighten them to fit. So we've taken the, tube in the, the tubing, the air valves, and the push to connect fittings and run them from bin to bin and in between the bins. the whole way across the entire setup here and I've zip tied the valves into the holes that we drilled in the bins or that were pre-drilled in the bins depending and then once we're sure of all the fit um, I'm gonna bury this rigid black tubing so that it's largely invisible and we are off to the hardware store now generally I try and support my local shop, but it's closed on Sundays and since today is Sunday, here to get some barb fittings. I had to go back to the hardware store to get a way to adapt my air pump to the larger ID hydraulic hose that I'm using, so I got this. hose barb splicer and I had to pay 16 cents for this length of tubing to merge the two together. I have successfully run the air 
to all the tubs and I buried my line so that none of that is visible. I'm still working on filling this 300 gallon. Since we have a well, I try and not use too much water at once, especially since I'm still operating the fish room. We had a little bench and there's a planter coming to hang some plants there to hide the air conditioning unit. So this is the last bin that I do that I haven't shown you guys really. These are native plants and this is where my impulse buy goldfish will go from club this weekend. Uh, generally I put out some of my little nano fish here but this bin in particular has a real problem with frogs. So this is what what my bin setup looks like as we approach it. As you can see, the air conditioner is still pretty obvious, so my husband's made a copper plant stand that'll go there for us to hide it a little bit better. This is the little air pump with the 16 cent tubing I had to purchase. Um, we're going to be putting in a grounded outlet here, and then we'll make a little shelf for that to sit on in a cover so that it's not affected by the weather and that'll get rid of this extension cord all the plants are growing in really well the sweet mint lizard tail and corkscrew the bloody dock has really grown the most Which isn't surprising, but that's all new growth. The 300 gallon is now mostly full. Um, Chuck Trost from Buffalo sent me a ton of frog bit, which I've spread around through all the tubs to supplement my other floaters. Thanks, Chuck. Everything's starting to grow in. I'm pretty excited to move fish out. I'm hoping within two weeks. It looks like the temperatures are supposed to get to a more typical range this upcoming week. And as long as they stay that way for a solid week and the tubs maintain their temperature, I'll move fish out. Again, that variegated dock is doing awesome. And then this is the, the plant that I found underneath my bins that I in, unintentionally overwintered outside and it has tripled in height and is starting to green up so that's pretty exciting its little friend over there is not looking nearly as happy so that may get replaced and I still have to buy a few more oxygenators My, a dear friend and customer of mine Madeline from Chicago sent me an absolutely insane amount of java moss this week so I've tossed some of that in each of the tubs as well for underwater cover for fry and then I'm just waiting for these surface plants to multiply um, and the root structure to fill out down into the water column to really be ready for, for fish. All in all, it's coming together pretty nicely. Once all the plants fill in, it should look, should look pretty good. Thanks for watching. Make sure you stop by my Facebook as well as my website, MsJinx.com, where you'll find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano. Now, the weekend of the 28th of May, I will be in Chicago for the Chicago Cichlid Classic. I would love to see some of you there. I'll put the information in the description.